Hello students, welcome to EPG Patashala. I am Dr. K. R. Ramamohan, Associate Professor, Head Department of Anthropology, Sikkim University. Today we are going to talk a module on definition and identification of tribe and scheduled tribe. So this module comes from the paper Indian Anthropology. So before we go this module, let us see what are the learning outcomes. After studying this module, you shall be able to understand the concept of what is tribe. You will know the definitions of what is a tribe given by different scholars. You would be able to understand the variations in tribes in the different criteria suggested by identifying a community as tribes. In addition, you would understand the debate and discussion in the effort to define and identify tribes. So how do we define and identify a tribe? You might come across some of the words and concepts in many conversations or in some books or in any form of literature. The concepts, the words like indigenous, aboriginals, backward Hindus, hill tribe, plain tribe, primitive and Adivasi. Now what makes a community a tribe? Is it, can we call a group of people as a tribe? So if you, can, if you cannot call a group of people as a tribe, then what are the distinctive features or the unique features to call people a tribe? So tribes are generally understood as indigenous groups. That means they are there in the geographical region for long, 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 long times. Indigenous when we call it as original, historical, with specific identities and when these people are called as indigenous in its histority and in its entirety. So this social group is identified by certain characteristic features. So the first and foremost important thing of the tribe is their, their culture is distinct from other social groups in Indian sphere. We all know what is a culture, what makes a culture. The examples of characteristics or features of culture are language, religion, traditions, customs, law, morality, their folklore, their ethos, belief systems is totally and it makes a unique group which is followed by they have this when we say a, tri a group is a tribe they have a set of own traditions. It could be a marriage tradition. It could be tradition towards religion, a political organization, an economic organization and many other aspects of social life. And people are guided by a set of values and beliefs which are totally different from other social groups. And most importantly there is a sense of belongingness that the we feeling that we are all one unit, we all belong to one identity. With this sense of belongingness, there is a collective responsibility that we are all living for one. So we have a duty and obligations to sustain this group. So with this kind of a setup, their economic organization, perhaps it is distinctive compared to other groups. 
And when we say a group is a tribe, perhaps geographically they are most identified by their geographical locations. The tribes are on the hills or tribes are on some plain areas or you know because of this distinctive cultural feature, their language, their religion and even their political system. And from an anthropological point of view, when we say that a tribe has its own culture and they have distinctive features, we can also further understand this social group, the rules of descent. How does one trace their genealogy? Either through patrilineal or through matrilineal? And how do they form their kinship system? What type of kinship system they have? With this kinship system, how do they have marriage rules and regulations? Whether it is a preferential system that some is preferred, and how do they form their marital relations? Is it clan based or is it outside the clan? Or what is the social distance between? from one group to another group and how does they form their family whether it is a nuclear family whether it's a joint family whether it is the type of residence which they live whether it is patrilocal whether it is matrilocal or bilocal or avanilocal and another important feature is their dialect the language that they speak which is totally different from other social groups and they have their own customary political systems. They have their own unique customary laws which governs in forms of the social control. So the entire moral system is based upon what kind of social institutions they have in terms of controlling their own behavior. And how do they regulate their social life perhaps is distinct from other social groups. Being understood the different characteristics of what is a tribe and the unique features of these communities. Now, What is the exact definition of a tribe? Since it is very diverse and uh, it, it, it becomes complex. There are certain issues revolving in defining what is a tribe. So tribes are diverse and each tribe is different from other tribe. Tribes in South India are different, tribes in North India are different or even within a geographical area. Even numerous tribes living together are different in their own ways. So there is no single definition which is accepted that this is the definition of a tribe. We know that these are the characteristic features of a tribe. But what is the standard definition? We could not come into grips. The consensual approach of a tribe. So Indian tribes and their cultural practices are being attracted by anthropologists since long time even before British administrators, apart from various definitions of tribe, perhaps the most closest, the most comprehensive definition given by D. N. Majumdar. D. N. Majumdar defines a tribe from an anthropological perspective as a tribe is a social group with a definite territorial affiliation. That means this group lives here, either in the forest, either in the valleys, or to some extent in the plain areas. So they are identified with a different territorial geographical area. And one of the important features of tribal life according to D.N. Majumdar is it is endogamous. So people marry within their own tribe. There are no intra-tribal marriages. And tribes are not 
specialized in terms of functions and they are ruled by their own leaders which it is basically hereditary or consensual they are united in a language or a specific dialect they have they recognize their social distance with other tribes so there is a clear cut definition between one tribe to another tribe they say that no we are different from this other group because of so and so characteristics because we are different our language is different so and so so tribe according to dn majumdar also follows a set of traditions practices beliefs customs which makes them conscious of their homogeneity and their integration with the territorial region let us also look into another definition given by lp vidyarthi vidyarthi defines tribe as a social group with a definite territory again one common feature they have a common name common district common culture they possess the behavior of endogamous group common taboos food taboo religious taboos existence of distinct to social and political system they have their own so tribe is an independent political unit they have full faith in their own leaders because a tribe is a self sufficient with their own distinct to economy so being said that how the constitution of india identified these communities and described them as scheduled tribe these groups are lumped into called as scheduled tribes in indian constitution article 366 25 chapter says that such tribes or tribal communities are parts of a groups within such tribes are deemed under article 342 to be scheduled tribes for the purpose of this constitution so elaborating article 342 the constitution of india prescribes a certain procedure to be followed in matter of specification of scheduled tribes that means how to declare a social group as a scheduled tribe what makes this group announced and put it in article 342 which clearly says that the president of india may with respect to any state or union territory and where it is a state after consultation with the governor thereof by public notification specify the tribes or tribal communities are parts of groups within the tribes which shall for the purposes of this constitution be deemed to be scheduled tribes in relation to other union territories or the parliament may make a law either to include or exclude from the list of scheduled tribes one tribe may not fit into the characteristic features of a tribe can be delisted specified in the notification issued under class 1 that any tribe or tribal community or a part or group within a tribe in a tribal community but save as aforesaid a notification is issued under the social said class shall not be varied by subsequent notification despite the constitution says that this is the scheduled tribe and who makes a scheduled tribe officially to identify a community of a scheduled tribe the following essential characteristics should be laid down which are specifically given by the lokur committee a committee was been constituted to look into if certain groups are claiming that we are scheduled tribes or please put our group into list of scheduled tribes what are the features that one has to say that yes this group is a scheduled tribe so lokur committee says that whether this group has any primitive rights 
in a sense that by looking into their distinctive culture, what forms they have contact with the other social groups, whether this group has a community feeling at large and in what location they are been residing, since how long they are residing, whether they have any affiliation with the territory. And lastly, what was their social development? Are they really backward to be enlisted as scheduled tribe? So according to T.B. Nayak suggested that there should be a criteria to say that this community belongs to or categorized or named after that this is a tribe. So Nayak says that a tribe to be called as a tribe should have the least functional interdependence within the community. That means they are independent on their own. It should be economically backward. The full import of monetary economics should not be understood by its members. That means the relations are purely social rather than economical. And there should be primitive means of exploiting natural resources should be used. That means the absence of sophisticated technology. By just very looking at them, one can say that, yes, what is your tools and techniques? We can say that, yes, this tribe has very low level primitive technology. So the tribe's economy should be at a very underdeveloped stage. They should not be fully developed. If they are fully developed, we can have no need to say that this group is a tribal group according to these identifications in relation with their socio-economic activities. And this group should have multifarious economic pursuits. There should be comparative geographical isolation from the rest of the groups. As we have discussed that, they should have a definite identification with its territorial. And culturally, members of a tribe should have a common dialect, perhaps which could have a regional variations from here and there, but that dialect is unique to, to them. And a tribe should be a politically independent unit. That means they organize their own things and they take their governance things on their own. Now, how people come to their own membership? So they should have a sort of psychological conservatism. Make them that we belong and we follow the same age old customs, which has been providing in the form of their customary laws in various things, in politics, in religion, in marriage, in family. And the way a community has a kind of a social control by norms, by mores, by folk ways. And the degree of acculturation with the other tribes must see in terms of their religion, their customs, their language. To summarize, we understood the concept of tribe, whether a group of people or a social group can be called as a tribe. If we call this group as a tribe, what makes this group as a tribe? So we have seen different characteristics that a tribe have. The tribe is has a territorial affiliation, the distinctness in their culture, the dialect is different, they are endogamous, there is a political independent political unit, their customs are different, their belief systems are different, their religion is different with the rest of the other groups. Anthropologists are very much interested with these groups because these tribes are diverse in nature. There are numerous tribal communities in India which are distinct from each other, though if two tribes are in the same geographical area, but in some ways they are different. 
either it could be their language or their marriage practices or their political organization. Indian constitution has come out with specific characteristic features to what makes or how to identify a group basing on the recommendations of Lokor committee that if any group claims that we should fall under a tribe or please list them in the list of tribes, Lokor committee has given a list of features like it should be backward, they should have simple technology, they should have primitive features, they, their dialect is different, they should be politically independent. So, basing on these features, the government of India, especially if the president feels with the recommendations from the states and union territories, can list them as under 3, 342, clearly states that the president is powerful or entitled to declare any social group as a tribe. Being said this, anthropologists have come out with various definitions of tribe, but there are certain common features then we say that a tribe has a communal feeling with a distinct dialect, with a, with a common territory, an essentially endogamous group with definite interdependence among its members and uh, they are free from the other social groups in terms of acculturation. So, with this, as India is diverse with many social groups, it is important for us to identify and study these tribal communities in a large country like India.